Hey, what if a, what if a boxing league? Imagine a boxing league where you could do steroids. But you know, we got to take him, take it, taking his stride. You know, and uh, definitely want a rematch. Um, Devin is still the WBC champion. He couldn't lose the belt because Ryan was overweight. He didn't make the skill. But we wanted to make the fight happen. And more importantly, uh, being the best fighter, you know, or being the second best fighter, the third best fighter, you can work. You can work to get there. Boxing pros have just exposed Ryan Garcia for allegedly using steroids after his recent win against Devin Haney. However, Conor McGregor swiftly stepped into the ring of support for Ryan Garcia, unleashing a barrage of verbal strikes against naysayers following Garcia's stunning triumph over Haney. He tweeted, Yup, Jesus and the sesh! He has no f all, peasants! Stay out of our ear! Well, in Garcia, an amazing fight from two champions, have now fought each other seven times. That's incredible! Some are just born to fight, some aren't. If you aren't, be sure to be a good gatherer because I be hungry. Garcia's victory echoed loudly as he sent the WBC super lightweight champion crashing to the canvas three times. In a one-of-a-kind setup, Garcia found himself surrounded by the melodies of a string quartet in his locker room. Surprisingly, even the renowned boxing icon Mike Tyson made an appearance to extend his best wishes for Garcia's success. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, champ? Moreover, McGregor recently connected with Garcia backstage following the match. He then shared backstage snapshots with Garcia, commending his performance with words of praise. He added, Godspeed to both men and teams in this crazy world and congrats Ryan Garcia. Tonight is your night. I knew when he fought Tank that this guy was electric, even in defeat. I went backstage after he'd been stopped to the body last time out. Only his close people were present. McGregor stated that a win or a loss would never define a person for him. He believed that fighters, the genuine people, and God understood this. He mentioned that the real challenge now begins for the young man, Ryan. McGregor encouraged Ryan to stay strong, have faith in the Lord's guidance, and remain determined. He humorously added that Ryan should keep his focus sharp, using a colorful expression. He added, A win or a loss will never make or break a person to me. When you know, you know. Fighters know. The real know. God knows. Now the real fight happens for the young man, too. Stay strong, kid. Believe in the Lord's guidance and keep it tight like a frog's ass. And Versace, lad. Ha ha ha, yes. Well in. It is true to say that Ryan Garcia sent seismic waves through the boxing realm with his stunning victory over Devon, causing ripples of astonishment throughout the broader sports community. As Garcia pulled off a huge upset, everyone posted on X, from Conor McGregor to Jake Paul. Garcia told reporters after the bout, I don't give a f what people say about me. I walked through the fire and still held it down and still beat f***ing Devin Haney and still drink every day. Not necessarily am I proud of that, but I'm just saying it was a statement to show you. You guys can't really f*** with me. In a wild spectacle on Saturday night, Garcia sent Haney to the canvas thrice, clinching a majority decision win. The bout was an absolute stunner, particularly given Garcia's turbulent buildup to the fight. Garcia failed to meet the weight requirement and opted for a playful beer chug during his weigh-in, prompting both parties to redefine the match as a non-title fight. Haney, undefeated with a record of 31-0 prior to the event, retains his championship status but sees a mark on his otherwise flawless record. Haney said he was disappointed in his performance. He added, He caught me early when I was sleeping on him, Haney said. He caught me by surprise. I fell asleep on the left hook. I gave him a shot. It's only right he gives me a shot back. Judging by the buzz generated from Saturday night's outcome, it wouldn't come as a shock if these two contenders square off again for a rematch. However, Gervonta Davis swiftly seized the opportunity to taunt Devin following his loss to Garcia. Soon after the bout, Davis made fun of Haney and his father Bill, who was present in the ring, on social media. He tweeted, Forget Devin! Where Bill at? Where Dirt at? He later tweeted, And what about you d riding ass people? Davis continued, I'm gonna give you all the address to Dirt Spot in Cherry Hill. Need you all to send mad pics of big ass poster to his crib of Devin in the air. Davis ended his trolling by saying, That's what happens when you fight someone the same size as you. In April 2023, Davis dealt Garcia his inaugural professional defeat, marking a significant milestone. While Haney clings to his title because of Garcia's weight mishap, he now finds himself on a journey akin to Garcia's quest for redemption post his Davis defeat. In the aftermath of the fight, Haney said he is open to a rematch. He said, I would love a rematch. I gave him a shot. It's only right he gives me a shot back. He didn't make weight, so I'm still 
still the champion, we can run it back. Amid fervent anticipation for his showdown with Devin Haney, throngs of eager fans flocked to Brooklyn's Barclays Center to soak in the spectacle firsthand. Among them stood NBA legend Allen Iverson, graciously carving out a moment from his bustling agenda to join the audience. Garcia's staggering trifecta of knockdowns left even seasoned observers like Iverson astonished by the sheer spectacle unfolding before them. During a recent interview, a reporter queried Iverson about his take on the altercation. However, the 11-time NBA All-Star appeared engrossed in conversation with professional boxer Antonio Tarver, brushing aside the inquiry. While Iverson evaded the question, Tarver said, Ryan did his thing tonight, man, you feel me. I just thought Haney didn't really give any resistance. No defense. He wasn't counterpunching. I thought his footing was bad all night. I just thought Haney would have performed a lot better, but Ryan learned something tonight. Meanwhile, Israel Adesanya, the former UFC champion, reportedly wagered almost $20,000 for Haney to prevail over Garcia. However, why was the outcome so surprising? Following Garcia's eccentric conduct before before the match, he faced significant criticism, with some even speculating about his mental well-being. Doubts arose about whether Garcia would persevere. Therefore, it's no wonder that fans were taken aback. However, after securing a stylish victory, the 25-year-old had a message for his detractors. In a triumphant display, he sent Haney to the canvas three times en route to securing victory through a majority decision. Though the initial two judges tallied wider margins, 115, 109, and 114, 110 respectively, the third judge saw it as a deadlock at 112. 112. Garcia's precision left hooks proved devastating, flooring his opponent in the 10th and 11th rounds, nearly sealing the bout in the latter. During the post-fight interview, Garcia said, Come on, guys, you really thought I was crazy? You lost your whole mind! My left hook is my left hook. That's blessed by God. You guys over-egg everything. You guys hate on me because I'm pretty and sh**. That's up. I put my reputation on the line. As Ryan Garcia showcased an electrifying display of skill, Jake Paul and his sibling Logan stood in astonishment, echoing the sentiments of countless others. Jake and Logan were visibly stunned as they witnessed Garcia delivering a powerful blow to Haney in the very first round. Meanwhile, Jake Paul commented that the fight was the most intense he had ever witnessed. He was amazed by the unexpected turn of events and said he was seriously breathless from excitement. He said, This is the craziest fight I've ever seen. Man, what an amazing fight and so unexpected I seriously can't breathe. Both are warriors and savages and never underestimate anyone. The past encounters between the Paul brothers and Garcia are marked by a memorable narrative. Garcia didn't hesitate to jab at Jake Paul following his recent bout, expressing a sense of remorse for being the one to initiate initially introduce him to the world of boxing. Paul responded, You just seem like you're losing your mind and acting thirsty and desperate and saying you're a billionaire when you had one money fight. I'm just saying just chill, bro. If you do want to fight, that's, to me, light work. You got no footwork. And as long as you've been in the game, I'm a better boxer than you. During a candid post-bout conversation, Garcia shared his personal challenges, revealing a daily routine marred by alcohol and smoking in the run-up to the fight. Furthermore, he candidly discussed his weight discrepancy, delving into the difficulties he encountered in the days preceding the way in. Garcia said, I was too big. I was dehydrated. It was really bad. I should have actually died cutting that weight. I was blistering out of my mouth. I had no spit. It hurt every day to make that weight. I was shaking in bed. The sh** was crazy. On the other hand, it seems like the aftermath of the Garcia versus Haney fight has stirred up some controversy and accusations. The accusation of Ryan Garcia using steroids after his fight with Haney is a serious matter that can have significant implications for Garcia's reputation and career. Steroid use in professional sports is strictly prohibited due to its performance-enhancing effects, which can give athletes an unfair advantage over their competitors. Accusations of steroid use are not only damaging to an athlete's reputation, but can also lead to sanctions, suspensions, and other disciplinary actions if proven true. The tweet from Dan Canobio adds fuel to this controversy by suggesting a lax attitude towards drug use in boxing. The tweet reads, Weed and steroids allowed if Ryan Garcia was boxing commissioner, implying that Garcia might be using prohibited substances and questioning the effectiveness of current drug tests testing regulations in boxing. Canobio also shared a video. Ryan, if you were the commissioner of boxing, what was one thing you would change? Commissioner of, oh, that everybody can smoke weed. Hey, what if, a, what if a boxing league? Imagine a boxing league where you could do steroids. I think you've been in the ring with someone that's on steroids? Oh, yeah. I thought Oscar Dorothy was on steroids. I'm not going to lie. That mother is crazy.
Meanwhile, before the fight, allegations of doping swirled around, adding fuel to an already fiery situation. Before the fight, Garcia pointed a finger at Haney, alleging a collaboration with Victor Conti, a notorious figure entangled in a previous doping controversy. These claims loom ominously over the impending bout. While Haney has weathered similar accusations before, the gravity intensified with his reputation hanging in the balance. But Haney refused to let this allegation slide without scrutiny. It all began when during his recent feature on the popular boxing platform, two toned a superstar, Ryan Garcia subtly hinted at the possibility of Devin Haney resorting to steroid use for his bout. The conversation ignited when the host inquired about Garcia's perspective on Haney's ability to lift 155 pounds. Garcia nonchalantly responded, citing his own rigorous squat regimen with a hefty 300-pound weight. This led him to assert his confidence, indicating that he harbored no fear of facing off against the dream. Garcia said, I'm not worried about pillow hands Haney, bro. He could lift whatever the f he wants. He could take steroids, because I heard that he wasn't giving his blood work to snack through the grapevine, allegedly. Furthermore, Devin Haney replied to Garcia's comments by reminding the Victorville native how he was the one demanded testing then, Garcia responded by saying that Victor Conte, whose sports nutrition company, Snack, Haney is associated with, is a master cheater who knows how to drown things out of his client's blood system. On this, Haney replied, Just shut the f*** up. You're real-life delusional. I'm pillow-fisted, but take steroids. Does it make sense? The dynamic between Haney and Conte has long been a contentious topic. In the past, Haney went as far as attributing his achievements directly to Conte. In 2019, Devin Haney stirred the waters of controversy by joining forces with Victor Conte's energy. Enterprise, Snack. Haney openly championed Conti's supplements, despite Conti's tainted past as the architect of the notorious Balco scandal. Back in 2019, Haney told Three Kings Boxing Worldwide, Victor has helped me tremendously. You know, before those four fights ago, I was telling Victor everything I was doing, and he told me I was doing everything wrong. And I was like, you know I have been doing this pretty much my whole boxing career? How am I doing everything wrong? I couldn't understand. This endorsement sparked a split among fans. While some applaud Haney's courage in relying on Conti's nutritional expertise despite his controversial history, others express concern, wondering if athletes can maintain true cleanliness under Conti's mentorship. Furthermore, Haney added, when he tested my blood, I wasn't that bad, but it wasn't the right way to be doing it. Victor started explaining everything to me. I feel like it took me to the next level, and my fights have been showing it. Coming back to accusations on Garcia, Gervonta Davis had accused him before their fight. Davis, hinting at the need for Garcia to undergo two tune-up fights, voiced his suspicion that Garcia may be definitely onto something. Venturing on to social media, Davis didn't hold back, pointing to Garcia's physical appearance in a photo alongside Tim Zhu. Despite Garcia being fully clothed, Davis wrote, No funny sh If I find out he's cheating, it's going to be a big problem, and it's going to be more than boxing problems. He never looked that big before. He's definitely on something. Sh Dazone proved that they don't care about testing, Garcia shot back with a tweet of his own. Spooked! I don't even take supplements, Garcia wrote. Tank's mention of Dazone's disregard for testing stems from the Connor Ben incident, where Ben was found positive for a banned substance before his anticipated bout against Chris Eubank Jr. Despite the controversy, there were indications that the fight might proceed as planned. Davis demanded, why didn't they ban Eddie Hearn for still trying to have fights after he knew a fighter was cheating and still tried to continue with a boxing match? I'm waiting. You're all quiet on this. It's not entirely bad that Ryan Garcia's victory over Devin Haney has caused some turmoil in the boxing community. Lately, chaos has been like Garcia's shadow, trailing him everywhere. Despite sending conflicting signals about his recent conduct, Garcia remains adamant, claiming he powered through his training camp despite heavy drinking and still emerged victorious. Garcia stated that he didn't care about what people said about him. He claimed to have faced challenges head-on, defeated Devin Haney, and continued his daily activities, including drinking, while still managing to beat Haney. I didn't even really want to say this, but it's the truth, you know. Everybody needs to acknowledge, like, yo, I'm tripping. Y'all was tripping, not me. You guys were tripping. I wasn't. I was the one that was actually with sanity, because I'm like, yo, there's, they're hurting little kids. Let's let's help them. That's, like, that's called being a real man. Because I don't give a f what people say about me. That's right. I walked through the fire and still held it down and still beat. Devin Haney and still drank every day and still beat him. Garcia mentioned that he did everything he wanted, including drinking every night and going out on Monday and Tuesday. Despite this lifestyle, he still emerged victorious. While he wasn't necessarily proud of his actions, he used the win as a statement to show that people shouldn't underestimate him because he does what he wants and still comes out on top. And I, I did everything. Not, what, what the f Hey, what, what happened? False reality, right? Drank every single night, went out on the first Monday and a Tuesday and drank. And dr what happened? I won. He did hey, but, calm hey, down. But not, hey, not hey. necessarily. I, wait, wait, wait. Not necessarily am I proud of that. But I'm just saying, right. this is. I, I, it was a statement to show you. You guys can't really f 
alchemy? That's right. I do whatever I want. I still want. Garcia explained that he's been facing significant challenges, including going through a divorce and experiencing various hardships that have affected him deeply. To cope, he drank daily and acted without restraint. He admitted that he wasn't proud of his behavior and expressed concern for his children, hoping that he hadn't let them down. Garcia emphasized that people shouldn't see him as a role model. I was just having fun, man. I I'm just looking. I'm going through a lot, you know. I got. I, I, I went through a divorce. Um, I just a lot of shit's been happening to me, you know, outside my life. Um, <clears throat> that low key kind of broke me. So, you know, I, I did what I felt I needed to do to feel okay. And so I drink every day and I do whatever I wanted. And uh, I'm not proud of it at all. I just pray, you know, pray for my kids and hopefully they're okay. You know, Henry, Bella, Riley. I hope I made them proud. Um, you know, don't don't necessarily don't necessarily look at me like an example. Look at Jesus Christ. Garcia emphasized that people should be cautious about believing everything they see on the internet and should avoid living in a false reality. He pointed out that there are more important and real issues to focus on rather than getting caught up with a young person behaving erratically online. You know, this is why people need to stop believing everything on the internet and stop you know living in a false reality. At the end of the day, there's a lot of real shit going on. You know, the last thing you should worry about is a kid acting crazy on the internet. Real shit is going on in the world. Open your eyes. You know, kids being hurt, nobody caring. Everybody looking at it like, oh, he's just crazy. It's a conspiracy. It's this, it's that. At the end of the day, it's real. Moreover, Ryan Garcia believes he missed an opportunity to secure a knockout against Devin Haney instead of settling for a majority decision victory. However, he attributes some of the responsibility to referee Harvey Dock. Although he didn't voice any grievances about receiving the opportunity, Garcia admitted that securing a finish would have added an extra layer of satisfaction, particularly in handing Haney his inaugural professional defeat. He initiated the bout with a powerful left hook in the initial round, shaking Haney's confidence. However, Garcia truly dominated with a series of three knockdowns, solidifying his victory. He said, At the end of the day, Harvey Doc, I think he was tripping. He should have stopped that fight. It was bad. Haney was really hurt. I felt bad. I even looked at Bill Haney. I said, Bro, you should probably stop this. He didn't, and that that's it. In the seventh round, the initial knockdown shook the arena. However, any advantage recorded on the scorecards was swiftly nullified when Doc intervened, deducting a point from Garcia for throwing punches after Haney requested a break. Rather than facing a penalty, Garcia believes he should have been permitted to persist until he decisively floored Haney. He said, The guy was holding me for dear life. I felt an opportunity to keep swinging while my hands were free and I cracked him. And then Doc took a point away when I cracked him, but he held me. I should have knocked him out in that seventh round. They stole that from me. Garcia Garcia managed to secure a majority decision victory over Haney, further fueling the debate about his potential and the future of his boxing career. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.